Hello? Hey, hey, good morning. What's up, dog? Good morning. Good day to you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. The title is making you a little confused. Wait for it. I'll get to it. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Blessings to you too. How's everybody doing today? Buenos dias. Where's everybody at? You have a very important question. I don't take questions on my lives. I mean, I do, but not on my walk talks. If you, if you have a question, um, I do live Q and A's on TikTok. So if you be on the lookout for those, I actually take the question, put it up on the screen, and then I will, I will answer that question for you. But if you have a question for me, um, currently I have the Q and A opened on my story. So leave me your question on my Q and A and I might reuse it and answer it in my story. So I do that, I try, I want to do that a few times a week. And um, you can go to my story, you can type in what your question is. And just so everybody knows, I'm not ignoring your question if I don't answer your question. Um, but <laughs> I get hundreds of questions on there. And basically what I do is I do this and then I stop. And then I answer it because there's so many questions. I don't know which ones to answer. Um, and if there's one question where I'm scrolling through and it's repetitive and somebody's asking me the same question, I will answer that, which is going to bring me to today's topic. So, hey, Milan, how are you? Today's topic is a question and some messages and um, uh, repeated interaction. I'm getting uh, in the past few days and it's hard to fathom this topic that reading the Bible does not make you close to God and it doesn't get you closer to God. So what do I mean by that? First of all, let me be clear with you with what I'm not saying. So when you have a ministry, a lot of people, they'll see one little clip of your ministry a social media ministry or even a regular ministry uh, where you're on stage uh, people will take things out of context or they'll see one little clip and then they'll immediately judge you based on that one little phrase or clip or comment or meme or quote so that happens quite a bit with me I'm used to it it doesn't bother me I understand because I've been there and I've immediately had knee-jerk judgment to quite a few different teachers. What I have found is we, when we see something that somebody teaches, posts, writes, whatever, we don't want to try to pick them apart. We want to understand that we're all learning and growing. And we want to view them in a loving way. Who would have thought? Love one another. So we want to build bridges. We don't want to burn bridges. So when we disagree with somebody else's theology or that doesn't match up with ours perfectly, we don't want to write them off and call them a false teacher or um, label them a heretic. Um, who are the true false teachers according to Jesus? He tells us the true false teachers are those who said he was not Messiah. There are countless Christians who no, Jesus is the Messiah. They're Christians. They believe, but they struggle with some error. So what? So build bridges, don't burn them. But what I want to say is what I'm not saying. I'm not saying don't read your Bible. That's not what I'm saying. Read it if you want to read it. Read it if you want to. 
If you don't want to, don't read it. There's no pressure on you to read anything. What are you waiting for the asterisk? Are you waiting for the yeah, but there's not any, you are free. So live free. If you want to read your Bible, read it. I'm not saying don't read it. Read it. I freaking love the Bible. I love the Bible. I use it to back up everything I say. So when I say reading the Bible doesn't get you closer to God, I'm not saying don't read your Bible. Nor am I saying that there's something wrong with the Bible. The Bible is true from Genesis to Revelation, front to back. It is the divinely inspired word of God. Now there is context for everything from front to back. One of the most dangerous things we can do is scroll through the Bible, pick something out and then apply it to ourselves. We got to know the context. Was this before the cross? Was this directed at Israel? Is this talking about an unbeliever? All these things matter. So the Bible is awesome. I highly recommend that you read it. <laughs> How about that? But I don't care if you memorize every single word, punctuation, character, story, translation, verbatim. That does not make you closer to God. It doesn't. The Pharisees, the Pharisees thought that. And in John chapter five, Jesus said, you search the scriptures diligently because you think that in them you have life. And I'm using this, the Bible to back up what I'm saying right now. Do you understand what I'm saying? So we have to, and then he continues on. That was uh, John 39, John, John, um, John 5, 39, and then John 540, he says, but you refuse to come to me. Those scriptures are talking about me. And there are countless people who know tons of scriptures, but they think that because they know the Bible, they're close to God or that makes them closer to God. It doesn't. Nothing can get you closer to God except a one-time belief in Christ for salvation. All right, so that's what I wanted to start this walk talk out with is, I'm not saying that the Bible's wrong. I'm saying read it in context. I'm not saying don't read your Bible. I recommend that you read your Bible, but I'm not your boss. You do what you want. But I will say one other thing. If, memorizing scripture caused you to be close to God and knowing it, the devil is close to God. We see this when Jesus went into the wilderness. Satan used scripture. How did he use it? Out of context. What does that tell you? The devil knows the Bible. He understands everything about it. So reading the Bible does not get you closer to God. It does not make you more holy. The Bible is not even holy. I know this is hard to hear. It is a book. It's perfect. It's right. It's true. But it's a book. It's a book. It is so awesome that we have the Bible canonized scripture. But the Bible is only, what, 1,600 years old, somewhere around there? If getting close to God was based on reading your Bible, how did the early church become close to God? How did people become close to God before the Bible was written? How did people even know God before the Bible was written? What about Adam? What about Eve? What about Noah? What about Moses? Who wrote a lot of the Bible? Do you see it? It's a book. It's a book. 
Yeah, but we got to know the word. You read the word and you'll know the word. The Bible never refers to itself as the word. How could it? It wasn't even complete until 400 years after Jesus. Do you see it? So when we see the word, there's a couple different translations of the word in scripture. One is referring to Jesus. Jesus is the word, the spirit, the word. You know, when we read the book of first John, we see the word quite often. The word is Jesus. People say you got to get the word in you. Yeah, you do. Jesus his spirit. And that's what happens when you place your faith in him for salvation. Once you don't get the Bible in you, you can memorize it in your brain because God created you with a brain that you can memorize stuff, but we are not feeding on a Bible. We are not feeding on words on a page. I gotta, I gotta get fed today with the word, but you don't. You're full. You're satisfied. You have the word in you. The word is the spirit of Jesus Christ. So when we see the word in scripture, it's talking about Jesus. Jesus is the word. The Bible is a book. So if if Jesus is the word and his spirit is the word, how do you get close to God? through him (laughs) when you place your faith in Christ for salvation you are literally placed inside of the spirit of Jesus the Holy Spirit the Spirit of God that's what baptize means not talking about water baptize I'm talking about the word baptize it means to place inside of That is what happens when you place your faith in Christ for salvation. You are baptized into Christ. Uh, Read Romans chapter 6. He talks about baptism. And not once does he refer to water. Water baptism is a celebration of your supernatural baptism. It doesn't cause you to be saved. It doesn't complete your salvation. Water is created. That is placing our faith in what is created. Get baptized if you want. Why was Jesus baptized? Because he was fulfilling Old Testament prophecy. Matthew chapter three tells us such was fitting. (laughs) If, If being baptized did something for Jesus, something's really wrong here. Do you see it? Jesus didn't have to get water baptized. He did that because he was fulfilling Old Covenant prophecy to prove he was the Messiah, and he was unraveling all these scriptures that was written about him. So if you haven't been baptized, there's nothing wrong with you. If you want to get baptized, Christian, get baptized because you want to, because you want to celebrate, because it's a public declaration. But physical baptism does not save. Spiritual baptism does. And that is as close as you can possibly get to God. So Billions of Christians have never read the Bible. Some of them don't even know what it is. But they've heard about Jesus with faith. They knew that they needed forgiveness. And they believed that he could do that for them. And they accepted it by grace. So when we see the words um, baptized, know that that means you're one with, you're being placed into. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, um, verse 17. You are united with his spirit. You're one spirit. So if you're united with him already as a Christian and you read your Bible every day, is that causing you to be united with him even more? No. No. So many ministries I see, read your Bible, get closer to God by reading your Bible. If you're not reading your Bible in context, reading your Bible can actually cause you to think you're further away from God when the covenants are mixed. And I'm not getting on that topic today. But when we don't understand the context of old covenant and new covenant, that's why when people ask me, where should I start reading in the Bible? Really, I want to say, you really need to understand the difference in the covenants before you begin. 
And then I want to direct them to my books. <laughs> Not to make money, but to help you understand there's a difference in what happened before Christ and after Christ. So when we pick up the Bible and just start reading, even the Gospels, it's so cool that we get to read about Jesus, but there's not much good news in the four Gospels. There's not. There's not much good news in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Why? Because the cross didn't happen until late in each gospel. Now, after the cross, yeah, lots of awesome stuff happened. But Christ came to teach the true standards of the law to the Jews, to the lost sheep of Israel. Who was Israel? Those who were part of the old covenant with God. Why were they lost? Because they were looking to the law for righteousness rather than believing God. So reading the Bible out of context it can even cause you to not think you're close to God. I got to get closer to God today. I got to get closer to God today. I got to get closer to God. Why? How? What? When? Where? What are you going to do? Anything that begins with I is works based. You get close to God by grace through faith once. Oh boy. So I, you know, I, I've got this social media ministry and each part of my ministry, I try to be as clear as I possibly can. But when we hear so much error for so long in regard to the Bible, as if we can't possibly know God without it, when you see something that I say in regard to you can't get closer to God through your Bible, that might come across as heresy, but I'm actually trying to give you some peace. I'm actually trying to help you understand that it is the spirit that teaches you everything. The Bible tells us this. The spirit of truth will guide you into everything that Jesus has said, not the Bible. The Bible backs up the spirit. The spirit doesn't back up the Bible. We've got that backwards. The Bible reiterates in written words or digital, what the Spirit tells you. This is why we can go back to the Bible for our foundation to back up what we're, what we're saying. We try to flip that around and we try to say, without the Bible, we can't know God. No, without God, we can't know the Bible. Do you understand? Do you see what I'm saying? So if this is heavy for you today, and if you know, you, you follow social media personalities and they're always telling you to do stuff. Just understand that whatever that do is, that is not the gospel. The gospel doesn't tell you to do anything. The gospel, gospel tells you to believe. The gospel actually tells you to strive hard to rest. Anything that is pressure filled, Anything that is coming from somebody that makes you think you're not doing enough or you're not good enough or you got to try harder, be more, um, you know, whatever, which causes effort, that's not the gospel. Listen, I'm all about hard work. I'm all about hard work. I, I, I have to be purposeful about resting. I'm an active person. And I have used that and mixed it in with the gospel and got an egg on my face. It's not what God designed for us to do. You rest. You get to rest from your state of rest. Then you work. You work from rest. You're as close to God as you could possibly be. There's nothing you could possibly do to undo this. You're sealed up with the spirit. You know, I posted this on TikTok the other day. Maybe it was yesterday. And this guy could not understand what I was saying about the inability for us to forfeit our salvation. He's like, well, if I don't want to be a Christian anymore, I don't have to be. That's not true. Because even when you're faithless, God remains faithful. You've been reborn. So... You have one of two options. Either you never believed to begin with, or you did, and you're just confused. Birth is final, because here's what happens. When we think we can forfeit our salvation, then we think we have to do stuff to keep it, such as read the Bible. 
See what I'm saying? So I hope this is helping you guys today. Um, and I'm actually going to cut this short today. When I first started these walk talks, they were 10, 15 minutes. And they've slowly graduated into a half an hour because I just have more to say. And I do have definitely have more to say today about this. But I think that's enough for today. Um, always tell the truth about yourself. What's the truth? You're righteous. You're blameless, Christian. You're a brand new creation. You're holy. You're blameless. You're one with God. You're free to read your Bible. You're free to not read your Bible. The Bible backs up the spirit. The spirit doesn't back up the Bible. Always tell the truth about yourself and just know that you're one with God and nothing can undo this. Hope you guys have a great day.